Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of November 7th, 2025. Let's start off today talking about expression maps. Sometimes you get an instrument that contains many different articulations. For example, this violin from Iconica Sketch. If I play a note, I can click through these various articulations. and I get all kinds of different sounds from the same instrument. If I have some MIDI notes from that instrument and I open them up in the key editor, down in the controller lane area, one of my choices is to be able to choose articulations. But in this case, there's nothing here. In order to see articulations in a MIDI editor, we first have to have an expression map. And there's a tab up here on the left that says expression map. When I open that up, in this case, it says no map. I click on it. I have a long list of various options, but at the bottom, it says import the key switches. Many times on the Steinberg instruments, it's just that easy to actually create an expression map by making that choice of importing the key switches. And we're going to look at this stuff in a minute, but the main purpose of having the expression map in Cubase is now we can simply draw in these various expressions. If I take my pencil tool and I take this first choice for staccato and I play the notes... Then I immediately have that kind of a sound. Or I could change down to the pizzicato and then play that. And you can mix and match these. If I want to start with a staccato and then switch over to the pizzicato, I get this kind of effect. Really allows you to bring some realism in terms of how an instrument sounds. Going back to the expression map, Again, because Steinberg mostly has these things ready to go on their instruments, there's not a lot of work to do other than turning it on. But if you have an instrument, maybe a third-party instrument, you don't have an expression map, how do you go about setting some of this stuff up so you can have the same benefit? You open up your existing expression map by hitting this little gear, and you can create a brand new expression map coming up to this tiny little plus sign, clicking on that. Right now it says Untitled. I'm going to give it a name. I'll just call it new test map. And over on the right where it says sound slots, you can see there's only one here. You can add more of these sound slots by hitting this plus sign or hitting the minus sign to remove these. So what do we have in a blank map? Come back over to our list of maps and come down and choose the new test map. You can see we no longer have any kind of articulations in the controller lane. So to begin creating these, we have to make some basic choices. We come to the remote settings drop down. Do we want key switches or program change messages? Now I'm going to say stick with these key switches. The latch mode, which means you don't have to hold the key down. Just hit it one time. The original root note, in this case C minus 2. Then you can assign notes if you want by clicking on this and filling out this little dialog. The main thing here, you can choose between chromatic, just the white keys, or just the black keys. I'm going to stay with chromatic. But what you're really doing when you're making a map, is you're taking an existing instrument, we'll go back to Hallion for a second, and trying to tell it, how to switch between these different articulations. Most of the instruments you'll ever deal with have these articulations already set up on the instrument itself. So your job with the map is to figure out how to communicate with the instrument so you can make these changes. If you look in particular at Hallion, above these different articulations, it actually shows a note number. In this case, it says C0 or C sharp 0 or D0 and on up the list. These are the notes that have to be pressed to change these different articulations. If I actually come down to the instrument on Hallion and hit any of these yellow keys, that's what it does. When I press these keys, these articulations change. So what you're doing with your expression map is setting up something that when you press some key on your keyboard, it's basically going to just trigger one of these keys and then change these different expressions. The power of the map is that it doesn't necessarily have to be these keys. It could be any number of things, and then it gets reassigned to actually press these. So let's make a couple, you'll get the idea, and then I'll leave you to do the rest on your own. So the next part of the equation is to go to this slot, go to the first area that says remote, click on this, and if we spin this with our mouse, or you could type something in, you want to choose what you're going to use to trigger the note on your VST instrument. I'll just stay exactly with what it says. First note is C0. I'm going to spin this up till I see C0. It's a good idea to give it a name. You click on that area. What I'm trying to trigger... This first articulation that says staccato, I'm going to name this violin staccato. You go to articulation one, you get some pre-made names. So basically you just take the same thing out of this list that matches whatever articulation you're working on. Start typing in staccato and then just click on it. 
Ned begins filling out this list in the lower right that says articulations. We come down into this area. But the first option we have is to choose if we want to see a symbol or text. Right now it's on symbol, and that's why there's just a little dot. If I change this over to text, again, I can type in a friendly name. Some of these options are just up to you, or what you prefer. Then a very important one next to that, you have a column that says type, the choice between attribute or direction. We're going to come back to this. Right now, I'm going to leave this on attribute. Again, there's a description, a friendly name. You can change that if you want, and an option for group. We can change this to any number of groups for other further options. Then we have to go up to this area that says output mapping. This is where we're going to tell the slot information what we want to actually trigger where it's at. We have to hit another plus sign up here. And then the first choice we have now, do we want to use note on and off? Do we want to use a program change? Or do we want to use a controller? Again, there's all kinds of ways that you could trigger your key switch. The first option with note on means I'm going to trigger it from a keyboard. If I choose program, then I can send program messages. And if I choose controller, I can actually pick a controller to change my articulations. I'm just going to stay simple and go with a note on. Next column asks us where do we want to make our C0 actually trigger. In this case, I want it to trigger C0. But I could have it trigger any key and remap it any way I want. I'm going to spin this back down to C0. And then I can change the data. We'll leave that at 120. Most of these other options, again, you can change them. I'm going to leave them at their default. Next, we want to go back over to the sound slot and create another slot. Hit the plus button. When I look on Halion, I can see that C sharp zero is pizzicato. I want to call this violin pizzicato. Pick a friendly name out of this list. Then come down to the articulation. Make any changes here if I need to. I change these back to direction for a minute to show you the difference. And then come up to the output mapping, the plus button, leave it a note on, change this to C sharp zero, and that's it. And I can continue to fill out this list as much as I needed to trigger whatever articulations I have on any instrument that I have. I'm just gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna save this just so it doesn't get lost, and then close this screen out. Now down in my articulations, I have those two choices that I created for staccato and pizzicato. And I can go back with my pencil tool, I can draw them in. I can switch between the two if I want. And then if I play it, if I look at my instrument while that's happening, it will change between staccato and pizzicato on these articulations. And that's what you want it to do. Now, the last thing I want to show you, there's another great option here. We open up our expression map. Coming back down to the area where it says articulations, if I choose this type and change it from direction to attribute, to change both these that way, you now have the extra ability to actually choose an individual note. Go up on your info line, and there's an option that says articulations. And if I click there, I can choose what kind of articulation. In this case, either the staccato or the pizzicato. So it allows me to choose note by note specifically what I want to do with my articulations. I've had some songs that actually respond better to this option than the direction option. So if you ever have a problem with how it sounds, experiment with these two options. If I play it, So there's a world of things you can do when you understand how to open up your expression maps and assign them or create them right from scratch if you need to and customize them to whatever specific instrument that you have. And if you want to see complete and detailed explanations going through all the information of expression maps and all these different options and how to use them, click the link in the description of this video to download your free preview of the digital audio manual where you can see all the different information that's available there. Stop by the digitalaudiomanual.com Thanks for watching, and then I'll see you on the next video.